Many programmers frown upon empty interfaces like this one. It's got an empty body. I can even remove the curly braces. Some say this interface here is a marker interface, which it is not. They sometimes go so far as to say marker interfaces are an anti-pattern, which they are not. So let me warmly welcome you to this video, where I will explain the genuine and unique purposes of empty interfaces and how you can use them to improve your designs. I use empty interfaces for two practical reasons. One reason may cause the creation of a marker interface, which I already mentioned. Here is how we end up needing such a thing. There is some imaginary data source in my demo. I want to implement persistence patterns now, such as the repository pattern. A dummy implementation could be helpful in testing, for instance. Nothing substantial has changed, except I now have that repository pattern applied as requested. Then comes the twist. This team also applies the domain-driven design. That makes aggregates, entities, aggregate roots, values and other such things important to us. That imposes some constraints. There is no such thing as just a repository and domain-driven design. In DDD, repositories can only return aggregates. Each aggregate type has precisely one entity designated as its root. Asking for a repository of book releases looks very suspicious to me. A release only exists within a book. While I understand why one would want to load books from storage, I cannot approve loading the book releases alone. Let me show you a practical trick that can resolve this situation. Define a generic type constraint that eliminates types that are not aggregate roots. Make this constraint an interface. There you have it, an empty interface. Then visit all the models that are indeed aggregate roots and tag them with this interface. The book is the aggregate root in my domain model. The release is not. Back at the place where I had troubles, the book's repository compiles just as it should and the releases repository fails to compile also just as it should. Say hello to the marker interface. An empty interface, which we only use to tag a class with some special meaning, is called a marker interface. It adds nothing to the class that implements it except the specific meaning we understand. A marker interface is not an anti-pattern, as some programmers say. It is a design tool. We use this tool to model some non-functional requirements. There is no magic in them. Use them sparingly and only when required, and you will live happily ever after. That brings us to the second use of empty interfaces I'm aware of, those interfaces that are genuinely empty. How did this interface appear in my design? Why is it here? Why is it doing nothing? Have I found an anti-pattern at last? That is the greatest secret of software design. The design changes over time. Don't say this interface is terrible because it does nothing. Think this way instead. This interface is not doing anything yet. Even though it is still indistinguishable from that marker interface over there, this interface plays an entirely different role. This class uses it. It models the book's release, which includes the edition as a component. Editions come in all sorts of forms. They could be a plain number, such as the first or second edition. Some specialized books are published seasonally and others may be published monthly. Here is the definition of the monthly edition. Each variant carries its own state definition and validation, which is a usual practice in object-oriented design. However, these classes stand out because each implements the iEdition interface, which is currently empty. I would never call that empty interface a marker interface. I know of a better name for that. A supertype. The iEdition is the supertype for all the concrete classes that implement it. Conversely, each of these concrete classes is one subtype of that interface. Subtyping is essential in strongly typed languages, such as c -sharp. Assigning a variable to this reference here wouldn't even compile if all those classes didn't implement that empty interface. The secret of the empty interface is that I have implemented it while modeling the data. The very definition of this programming language forces me to define an empty interface, which is good. Now I know the compiler will verify all assignments for me. That's why I chose a compiled, strongly typed language in the first place. This tiny little interface could 
sit here for years doing its tiny little duty for the compiler. However, one day the functional request could come, we must support a feature to print the next edition of a book. You must focus on the problem domain for a moment now. Preparing a new book edition retains the publisher and the culture but advances its publication date. It also advances the edition itself but in a very narrow sense. Unlike publication dates, the edition numbers must follow one after another. How can I enforce that? Well, there is that interface already. All it did so far was to ensure syntactically correct assignments. I will now use it also to ensure semantically correct assignments. You can download the entire source code from my Patreon page, including parts I will not show in the video. Every registered patron helps hundreds of other programmers watch all the programming videos on my YouTube channel for free. So please visit me on Patreon and help me keep this channel free forever. Do you see how that empty interface suddenly becomes non-empty in a perfectly natural, orderly manner? Every implementation must implement this new method now. All existing implementations have turned red, indicating this is a breaking change in the model. Many programmers frown upon breaking the open-closed principle. In a closed model such as this one, I see that OCP is often futile and pointless. I favor the evolutionary design more because it allows me to develop a powerful domain model over time. Evolutionary design is a long story. I will not cover it further in this video. I will emphasize that the once empty interface is now a non-empty one. Anyone calling this a marker interface would obviously end up being wrong, which is a pity. Don't end up being wrong. If anyone said that having an empty interface is an anti-pattern, they would obviously end up being wrong too. Now go on and learn more about designing complex domain models from other videos on my channel.